Welcome back to a new video. In this video, we're going to do walking and application room. This room has been released recently and it is all about doing security review for our application using only your browser developer tools. So if you read the description here, it's a bit interesting. Uh, manually review a web application for security issues using only your browser's developer tools. Hacking with just your browser, no tools or scripts. So this room is focused uh, or centered around using the browser developer tools to do or conduct security review of a website or a web application. I'm going, I'm going to go over the tasks and for each task we will be answering the questions. All right, so we're given here a website called ACME IT Support. Now on this site, uh, throughout the tasks, we're required to retrieve flags. So basically the flags can be retrieved by conducting the security review using your developer tools. So the first thing you would do when you review an application or website, you would first explore the site. Normally you would go over the uh, pages, see what are the uh, sections displayed on different parts of the page. Um, also, you, could, you can see there are different forms on the page. Normally, when you conduct a security review for sites, you will be interested or you will be more focused towards interactive components, such as forms, registration forms, contact forms, and here is a login forms. Other interactive sections like buttons, and you see here we have a kind of paywall. The paywall here is a kind of wall that hides a content which is supposed to be displayed for a certain set of users. So this one, or this paywall, is dedicated um, uh, to, I, I mean, dedicated to uh, be shown for users who are not premium. So that's the purpose of the paywalls. That's considered as an interactive part of a page and also target for testing. If you go to home page, uh, it's a static part here. So we have the paywall, we have the buttons, and we have the forms. So basically, after you de uh, decide what are your testing areas and you have explored the site, you will be ready to go ahead with the next step. So normally, the next step would be to go over the page source. So when reviewing the page source, normally we would uh, try to find out uh, some content or hidden content. Normally hidden content is found in the comments section. So as you can see the comments starts with this symbol and between uh, the arrow we have here the hidden content. So basically it's not actually hidden. It's only hidden from the user or the original user. So this part is not displayed back to the uh, end user. It's only displayed when you view the page source. So sometimes you would find interesting information in the comments section of our page. Of course, in the real world scenario, you will not find passwords or credentials or tokens in the comments. Uh, it's not realistic though, uh, but you will find, you may find, you may come across some uh, interesting parts that would lead you somewhere in your testing. So see here, we have this uh, the statement, this page that says this page is temporary while we work on the new home page. And the, def the developer defined the new home page by mentioning the name of it. So if you try to access that new home page, you see a flag is revealed. Now the, the moral of the story is not in the flag. The moral of the story is where to look for information. So comments are uh, uh, a place where you would want to look for information, especially if you're doing CTF. When you're doing CTF, you most definitely will encounter information that would lead you somewhere in the comments section. Again, in the uh, if you scroll down, you will see here another comment that says page generated in 003-727 seconds using the THM framework version 1.2. So this also reveals the version of the framework that was used to create the web page. So revealing the, the version of the framework, you will be able to um, conduct vulnerability research and see if there is a really matching exploit against the framework. So here you go, you might be able to end up with a web shell, uh, sorry, with a reverse shell back to your machine just uh, because you uh, were able to find the version. And here we have 
a page so during enumeration you will be interested in navigating through all of the pages uh, displayed in the comment section so we here we have try hack me for framework home change log documentation this is the framework as I said earlier that have been it has been used to create the site so if you click on change log you will see here uh, what have what has been done uh, throughout the life cycle of the framework so version 1.1 version 1.2 what has happened version 1.3 here an interesting finding has been revealed we have had an issue where our backup process was creating a file in the web directory called temp.zip so here in this uh, revelation it was revealed that there is a file uh, in, the, in the root directory of our application that you may be able to download so if you click on that and you see you will be able to download the file upon downloading the file you will see a flag the flag will be uh, found by downloading the file all right so let's see the questions so basically what is the flag from the html comment all right so if you click on the view page source again and you navigate to new home beta you see this is the first flag Next one, what is the flag from the secret link? Now again, back to the view page source. So if you scroll down, you will see here a link. It starts at the paragraph tag and it says href equal slash secret page. Now, basically, as I told you earlier, in a real scenario, it's less than it's less likely that you will be able to uh, find sensitive information by just navigating through the links, right? But if you click on that, we'll find the flag. Now, what is the directory listing flag? So here we come to another challenge or another. Uh, I'm sure it is not a challenge. I just uh, misused the word. Uh, here we come to another interesting thing about reviewing page sources. So basically, if you go, if you uh, look at the um, sections or the links you will see here we have at the image tag source equal slash assets slash tab dot png so assets is a directory in the web application if you try to access that directory you'll see a listing of all of the files found in that directory now the interesting thing about this is directory listing is actually considered as a weakness or security misconfiguration in a web application. It is not a vulnerability. Uh, it's only a weakness or security misconfiguration. Why is that? Um, basically, if you were able to list the contents of a certain directory like assets, uh, you may be able to see some sensitive files and you may not see any sensitive files. It depends on the developers and how they have or how they built their web application. But in this scenario here, there is a file called a flag. You'll see, you'll find the flag here. The equivalent of a flag file in the real world scenario could be a backup file or a script file. So it's recommended that you disable directory browsing in your application. So to avoid that, other people would sneak around your files and web server so this is the flag for this one what is the framework flag now again we go back to the page source at the very end we saw that there was a comment about the framework used to build the application if you navigate through the link put out in the comments you will see here um, a change log and you will see there is um, text or in this in the version 1.3 the statement mentions something about file called temp.zip just to go ahead and download the file and you will see the flag is keep your software up to date okay now we see here the page source right let's go over another browser developer tools okay let's take it to the right and start with the browser developer tools so basically if we go back and I click on inspector element to open the browser developer tools here the uh, if you are a developer or a pen tester, you would be interested or you are interested in three sections the inspector the debugger and the network 
So basically, in the inspector, here you see a parts of the page. The you will be able to inspect all the parts of the page. You'll be able to see the code, the CSS, HTML, or JavaScript code behind every part of the page. In the debugger tab, you will be able to debug stuff on your page, why something is not working. You will be able to see that in the network uh, debugger tab. The network tab, you will see all of the requests sent to sent and received from servers uh, uh, outside the, I mean, servers, web, your servers you communicate with and parts of your web server like internal pages and files. You will see all the requests found here. So if you go back to the inspector, let's take an example. If you go to the news, news page and you click on the tips, three tips for keeping your printer working. Again, we will see the paywall here. All right. So basically, this is the paywall. If you want to see uh, how this paywall or how we bypass this paywall, first, let's go to style editor. And in here, we click on or first, let me let's do this. So basically, this is the style the paywall. Right click on the area of the paywall and click on inspector element. Go to style editor and um, click on style.css. So if you scroll down, you see there is the section for this paywall premium customer blocker. So what controls? What controls the shape and the uh, uh, visual elements of this paywall actually lies here. So you can just change the style and uh, other visual elements of the paywall from here. But how can we just try to bypass this paywall to reveal the content behind it? So there is a con there is content behind the paywall. So there must be an element that controls that so if you go to display you see it says block or the value is blocked if you change that to none as you can see the content has been revealed simple as that this is a way to bypass paywalls but sometimes even if you change that to none it won't work because there is some sort of authentication uh, on the server end so it always checks if the value is actually blocked or not. And if it is not blocked, it will not display the content. But since we are talking about a vulnerable application here, uh, it might, you may come across some examples in the web where, you're, where you might be able to just view the contents or unhide, unhide the paywall. And here you go, it reveals a flag. So use that flag to answer the question. All right, next one. So here is the inspector element of the browser developer tools. Now. Let's examine another one. So if you go to um, the contact page. So if you refresh the page, you see there is a flash, a red flash, just going out, right? And then immediately hides itself, right? You see here. Now, how come we want to know what is going on? So basically, for that purpose, we will use the developer tools. Specifically, we will use the debugger. The debugger is a way to take a look at what is happening in the page. Specifically, we can use the breakpoints to just control, to just control uh, the execution of the page. So basically, what we would like to do here, we would like to uh, stop the execution of the page just when the red flash shows up. So we first, we have to determine at which line Okay, which, which is the line that controls the appearance of that red flash? So if you scroll down all the way down, you will see here flash remove. So if you click on that line, you will see here um, blue mark indicating that you have just created a breakpoint. If you refresh now, see here the execution of the page just paused and you will see the red flash all right, and it contains a flag. You can just take the flag and answer with it. The moral of the story is you can use the breakpoints in the debugger uh, tool in the browser developer tool just to control the execution of the page and uh, troubleshoot basically. 
in CTFs, this is definitely useful uh, because it may, the page may contain some flags like this one. Okay, now this is the debugger, this is the inspector. Now we will examine the network. All right, okay. So go to customers or back to contacts. So here we have a form. Okay, now if you click again on inspector, click on network. If you want to view all of the requests sent by your browser to the server and vice versa, you just click on the network and refresh. You see all the requests sent and received. Okay, now if we try to fill in the form, fill out the form with some information, contact info, and I click on hi, send. Take a look again at the network part. You see here, contact message. This is the file that has been used to send your message. And if you are curious enough, you may be tempted to access the file. So double click on that and you will find the flag. So as a, again, the moral of the story is not in the flag. The moral of the story is in the usage of such tools. All right. Okay. So you take the flag and answer with that. And this concludes the room or the answers of this room. I hope you find that helpful and see you in the next video.